Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Standby Power Measurements. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical introduction to standby power and how standby power is measured. Standby power measurements are usually made with a special instrument called a power analyzer. We'll discuss power analyzers in this presentation, but please see the separate presentation, Understanding Power Analyzers, if you'd like to learn more about power analyzers and the types of measurements that can be made using a power analyzer. Many, if not most, electronic devices have some kind of standby or low power mode. For example, the clock on a microwave oven still requires power even when that oven is not being operated. Another example is a television which cannot be entirely off if it has to respond to a remote. This standby power is often very small, often on the order of milliwatts, although in some cases it can be as high as several watts. But as the number of electronic devices increases, the sum of the standby power can become significant. In fact, it's estimated that 10 to 15 percent or more of the total power consumption in a residential or business setting is due to devices in standby mode. And over time, this percentage is almost certain to increase. There are therefore two important reasons why standby power should be measured and quantified. The first reason is to monitor and potentially reduce the amount and cost of electricity consumed by devices in standby mode. The second reason is to comply with regulatory requirements regarding acceptable standby power consumption. And in fact, many countries do have standards or regulations regarding standby power consumption. For example, the Energy Star program in the United States, or the Eco Design Directive in the European Union. These standards are intended to promote the efficient use of power and to promote power conservation. Not only does this lower cost, but it can also have a measurable impact in other areas, such as environmental concerns related to the production and use of energy. In many cases, complying to a standard requires that the device's standby power consumption be below a given threshold. And some standards sort devices into different categories based on the amount of standby power that they consume. Although there are a very large number of national and regional standards, most of these standards make reference to EIC 62301, which is the main international standard for measuring standby power. EIC 62301 standardizes both the test setup and the test conditions for making standby power measurements. The main requirements covered by the standard fall into three categories. The first is requirements on the AC mains power source. For example, the voltage and frequency must be within 1% of the nominal values, and the AC waveform must be very sinusoidal, that is, without significant harmonic content. There are also requirements for the measuring device. As we'll discuss in a few moments, the measuring device must be able to measure very low current, currents with high crest factors, etc. And lastly, there are requirements regarding how the results are reported. The test report not only has to contain information about the device under test and the test environment, but must also contain measurement data and information about how that data was obtained. The reason why there are requirements for the measuring instrument is that standby power measurements can be quite challenging. Standby power normally involves both low powers and low currents, often in the milliwatt or microamp range. So high accuracy, high resolution, and high sampling rate are needed. Another reason why standby power measurements are challenging is that standby current is almost always drawn in bursts rather than continuously. These bursts of power are typically used to charge a capacitor which then supplies the power between the bursts. Drawing power in bursts can lead to a high crest factor or peak to average ratio, and this makes it difficult to set measurement ranges. And finally, the nature of standby power measurements means that data must be collected and stored over long periods of time, that is on the order of minutes, hours, or even days. These and other challenges make it difficult or impossible to efficiently measure standby power manually or using other instruments, such as oscilloscopes. Therefore, 
Specialized instruments called power analyzers are the preferred way of making standby power measurements. These instruments can automate the measurement process based on user-defined settings and or parameters. And in many cases, they can also return or produce a test report at the end of the measurement period. Results are obtained by integrating over time intervals using a high sample rate in order to capture the short duration events that are common in standby operation. Let's look at a typical test setup for a standby power measurement. The device under test is connected to a power analyzer, usually by plugging it into a special mains adapter. The power analyzer is then plugged into mains power. Remember that there are requirements for mains power with regards to the nominal voltage and frequency, as well as with regards to distortion. If these cannot be met via a standard wall outlet, a special AC power supply may be required. The next step is configuring the test parameters on the power analyzer. These include the mains voltage and frequency, and things such as the DUT's expected crest factor, current consumption pattern, test duration, etc. Once these have been configured, the test typically will run automatically, and at the end of the test, both a pass-fail result and relevant statistics are displayed. In many cases, a test report can also be automatically generated. The test report is a very common way of presenting the results of a standby power measurement, and the standard format of this test is defined in EIC 62301. In addition to the measurement data itself, a test report must also contain information regarding the customer, the test lab that conducted the measurement, the device under test, the instrument used to make the measurement, the test conditions, and a test summary, which also includes the overall pass-fail result. Let's end with a brief summary. Many, if not most, modern electronic devices have some form of low-power standby mode. In this mode, the device is nominally off, but still consumes some small amount of power, for example, in order to display a clock, or to respond to a remote control. The power consumed in this mode is typically very small, often on the order of milliwatts, but the sum of the standby power consumed by all devices in a residence or a commercial setting can in fact be quite large. For this reason, various regulations and standards, such as EIC 62301, address standby power consumption. In particular, these standards often specify the instruments and methods to be used when measuring standby power, as well as the acceptable limits for various device categories. Accurate and efficient measurement of standby power is usually performed using a so-called power analyzer. This is a specialized instrument designed to meet the challenges of standby power measurements, such as very low power and current, and very high crest factors. Once configured, a power analyzer usually can both automatically run a standby power measurement, as well as produce a standards-compliant report showing the results of that test. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Standby Power Measurements. If you'd like to learn more about standby power measurements, power analyzers, or other power-related topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.